Uh, so this is, yeah, this is one of our smaller audiences than what we've had in a while. Kind of interesting. You're all here to learn. All right, so um, I'm Cole Geisinger. I'm an engineering manager for a company called TenUp. We're a fully distributed company, so we got uh, over 100 employees across the world. Uh, we specialize in doing um, high-scale WordPress websites for large enterprise businesses. So we do a lot of work uh, with... Um, TechCrunch, um, uh, NBC is one of our, one of, uh, we've done some projects with them, um, some things with Google. We got a nice, fun little catalog for you to kind of check out on the, the website, which is just tenup.com. Um, we're always constantly looking for new talent. Uh, we're a fast growing company, um, so if you got a lot of like, development experience, design experience, project management. We're especially looking for project managers right now. Uh, if you're interested, let me know. Uh, otherwise, I full-time also, well, not, I wouldn't say full-time as much as Melissa, but in the <laughs> evenings, I am uh, the CTO for WIMP, so I deal with a lot of our different internal technologies, our website, uh, putting together, um, uh, making sure that meetups getting funneled into our website, uh, making sure that the WIMP space here is all kind of running and things like that. So uh, I got a lot on my plate usually and constantly always working. Um, but tonight, we're gonna talk about Runt.js, yay. Uh, and I thought this would be kind of a fun talk to kind of cover because uh, the times that I've talked with other WIMP members, I found you know that a lot of, a lot of us are still kind of in some uh, some traditional paths in a way, and that's that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But uh, over the last few years that I've been, you know, really focusing on doing, you know, you know, application development, which is really where web development's kind of switching. We're no longer just building websites; we're building applications. Really, is what we're doing nowadays. Um, and with that, you know, things have gotten more complex. You know, we got things like SAS, and you know, there's all kinds of things that you could do performance-wise for your JavaScript and things like that. Uh, those are all tools that a lot of um, uh, people have really kind of fall, uh, fallen on to, and one of those is Grunt, to try to take advantage of one of those things. So uh, I thought this would be kind of a fun talk to talk about and kind of expose some more people to the idea of it and uh, getting to kind of know Grunt some more. Um, tonight's talk really is more so to kind of get your feet wet. So like if you've had experience with Grunt already, you know, there might be some things that you might learn in here, but we're going to kind of touch on it lightly and then back it up with uh, an actual like hands-on workshop, like maybe four or five hours like in an evening. Um, my weekends are kind of packed, so it's looking like probably it's gonna be a, be a weekday. Uh, I'd be open to getting anyone's suggestions as far as like what day or time kind of works best for them. So, uh, so let's get into this a little bit. Uh, we're gonna kind of cover these four pieces here. We're gonna talk about just what exactly is Grunt uh, why you want to use Grunt, what you can do with Grunt, and then we'll all kind of wrap it up in just like a quick, small little example of like, you know, Grunt in action, you know, we'll kind of quickly set up a small, very basic little project where we'll just take some real basic JavaScript and minify it all into the smallest file size that we can so Google likes our website. Uh, part of that reason, you know, if, you know, what Google takes in factors of why you rank number one. So to start with, what is Grunt? Uh, first off, who actually has used Grunt before? Anybody here? Got two people? Anyone else? All right, cool. Awesome. My audience. Uh, so Grunt uh, was released in March 2012 by Ben Allman. And it's a, uh, as it started, it was basically outlined as a task-based command line build tool uh, for JavaScript projects. Kind of a mouthful, it's a little terrifying. It's like, I don't really do anything with JavaScript. I don't know why I need this. Uh, but really, like, the things to really kind of take out of this is that it's task-based and it's command line. Uh, if you're not familiar or comfortable with command line, that's okay. Like, you know, it, it, it is, it, the interface that you use to work with Grunt is on your command line interface. Uh, but uh, it's really not that hard once you kind of get in there and you spend a little bit of time to kind of get, get familiar with it. Uh, and with it outlining JavaScript projects, basically, Grunt is actually an extension of Node.js. I know, I know, I'm kind of tossing around some words here that it's like, whoa, hang on. Uh, even though it's built on Node.js, it doesn't mean that you need to know 
know JS or know anything really about it. It's basically just this extra little package that lives on top of this that Grunt uses to actually do all of these different task-based um, processes that you ask it to do. Um, and as of version 0 0.4, this tagline actually kind of changed up a little bit to the JavaScript task runner. So again, it, it's built on JavaScript. It, that's the underlying foundation, the language that it's built on, and it's used to process tasks for you. So that's you know tasks of processing your SAS, or minifying your JavaScript, or optimizing your images. These are all redundant tasks that we all find ourselves facing to do every single day. Uh, Grunt is fairly popular. They're not the only build tool out in the wild. Uh, nowadays, you'll kind of start hearing some other uh, people in the industry just like, well, what about Gulp? Gulp is another really popular build tool that's kind of picking up more steam. Grunt's been around a little bit longer. Um, personally, I I really enjoy Grunt at this moment. Why like, I kind of pitch it more so is because uh, it's been around a lot longer. And in today's industry, there's so many new languages that are getting produced, built, you know, and then they just fizzle out out of nowhere. Um, and my personal opinion is like, Seniority is very important in this space as far as tools go, because you know, you know, you got all these different things that are going on, especially in the JavaScript spectrum of things. Uh, a lot of new stuff that's always getting built, but Grunt has kind of stayed true, and and with that, you know, it since February 2015. By the end of that, it's been downloaded 11,000, uh, 1.1 million times. Uh, and then with that, uh, last time I checked, it was uh, end of last week, it was at about 11, just about 12,000 public plugins that you can actually download. And the reason I, I also list off publicly available plugins is that you can actually take Grunt and build your own. Like, if for whatever reason, there, out of these near 12,000 plugins that there's not something out there for you that you're looking for it to do, you can take it and build it yourself if you want. And there's a lot of documentation around that too, which is great. Uh, so. This is one of the reasons that I really enjoy Grunt is because it's it's been around for a while. It's got a lot of uh, community behind it. Uh, it's very popular, but uh, there is also still a high probability that other tools can swoop in and take the game. So be ready to pivot at any moment, <laughs> such as our industry goes. Um, so this is kind of a, a quick example of what this kind of looks like. So this is a screenshot of my command line interface, I, I, use a, I use a Mac, so I have a, an application on my computer called iTerm that I use, and I've styled it out so it looks all nice, cool, and pretty, like I got my, my username, the name of my computer, where I am in my computer, and a whole bunch of other really fun stuff. But the pieces that are the most important is this one line. I type in that, and it ran six tasks for me. And what that one line did is it it actually checked all my JavaScript to do any preliminary checks of, are there any bugs in this that are known things that, like, you wrote this wrong, you need to go and fix it. It checks for that. It did that just fine. It, it went through two files, not a whole lot, but in most projects, you know, that easily bloats into many more. Um, also with that, it took all of those, uh, it took two of those files and uh, concatenated them all into one file. So that's the idea that you use for um, extra performance gains of like, you know, the more files that you're loading into your web browser, into your website, that's more load time on your website. So that's a performance gain that I get by taking all of my scripts and mashing them into one. So that's another thing that it's running for me. Right after that is this line, and it's, it's a little tiny. Let's see if maybe I can bump that a tiny bit. Does that work? Not so much. Okay. Um, the next line is a, another task called Uglify, which is the idea of taking my concatenated files, that, that one file, and taking it and mashing it into the smallest file size that I can. So that's stripping out all of the white space, reducing variable names to, the, you know, to like a single letter, like things that just is not human readable, but computers love it because it's, it's just that, that less amount of data that it needs to process. Um, after that, like I, I'm a huge uh, SAS person, so I write all my, all my styles in SAS. It processes all my SAS into CSS, it takes that CSS and minifies it, uh, and then it's optimizing images. I do that one command, and it did all of that for me in, could have swore it gave me an actual time, but like it did that in like two seconds at the most. I did all of that in two seconds, which is amazing. 
Uh, and that's kind of one of the giant perks, really, of, of Grunt, is you know, these are things that we all try to do to try to get those performance gains, you know, things that's kind of somewhat expected to a degree, like in, you know, in professional web development today. Like these are all kind of common things that we're used to doing, but this tool can go in and do all of it for us. Uh, so we'll kind of dive into this a little bit more. So don't be terrified if you don't understand a, half of what's happened here. That's why we're here, and that's why we're talking about this. So let's, let's dive in a little bit more. Um, why use Grunt? Uh, kind of gave a little bit of, of a quick um, touch. Uh, but what I've really kind of found out is that there's three key reasons of why you really want to use Grunt. And I brought that down to productivity, consistency, and community. So productivity. Uh, this is kind of the one area that I think sort of kind of sets it home for a lot of people. Like the times that I've talked about Grunt, you know, some people will look at this and be like, well, like, you know, I can just go in and manually do that. Like it takes me a couple minutes to do it. So what? Uh, so I decided uh, to kind of break it down a little bit and, and hopefully maybe this kind of helps you realize that how far two minutes actually goes uh, and how much that's actually, that's actually doing for you. So let's pretend you have a real small basic project. You're, you're writing your CSS and SAS um, and with that you know, you're just doing some basic JavaScript and you want to minify that stuff so you can get your performance gain, right? However though, to do this process, we actually have to do that six times an hour. So already this two minutes has bumped to 12 minutes every single hour. But if you're working an eight hour day, that turns into actually 96 minutes that you lose in your eight hours that you've worked. That's a lot of time. That's, that's like an hour and a half that you could have been spending working on something more important for your client rather than compiling your stuff so you can get that, that extra performance boost. Um, I mean, there's nothing necessarily wrong with it. I mean, hey, you're billing for it, right? That's great. But in my, my honest opinion, though, is like, you know, you want to try to be as productive as possible. You know, those two minutes turn into that hour and a half that you are technically not productive. So uh, with bringing in Grunt, if you theoretically spend two to three hours just to learn Grunt, that will get you really far in the game. Uh, if you really like, if you're really familiar with JavaScript, that will be even. It will, that time frame will be even less. Um, and then from there, for you know, to do a, a basic project, uh, I mean, what Grunt is is basically you're writing scripts to automate a lot of this. So it takes a little bit of time to kind of fine tune it and tweak it. But once you get in that path, in that process, you know, one to two hours at the most. Uh, and then from there. You know, within a, theoretically within a week, you should be able to recuperate that initial time that you spent learning Grunt for the first time, and then spending that one to two hours just implementing that into your project. And then, you know, after a week, it's all nothing but cash money, cash money, right? Um, meanwhile, you know, if we come back to our original workflow, every single day that you work eight hours, you're losing that hour and a half that you'll never see back. But with this, you spend just a little bit of time up front to sit down and actually learn it, then it's no problem. Start to see that, that actual value you know, in, in the, um, the billable percentage, in a way, actually truly go up. So hopefully that kind of puts it in perspective a little bit of why so many people are behind the idea of these build tools, you know, such as Grunt. Um, and this is one of the the biggest reasons of why I use it, like, you know, I gotta, I gotta stay productive and get as much done as I can. Like, in the end, you know, like, the faster you can produce a project, the more you can take on in the flip side. You know, if, if you finish this project, you know, in X amount of time because Grunt saved you this amount of time off of the project um, time frame in total, now you're that much closer to taking on a new client, and a new client, and a new client, and so on and so on. So, hopefully that kind of, kind of makes sense and puts it into perspective a little bit. Um, one of the other items is consistency. Uh, we're all prone to human error. We are our own worst enemy at times. Uh, we like to think that we're perfect and that we're able to, you know, and it's like, yeah, you know, manual process, like, I got this, like, it's redundant, like, muscle memory, let's do this. But no matter what, like, you're, something's bound to happen, like, you miss something, uh, 
you know, you didn't minify something quite right, or you missed a semicolon somewhere and you processed it, and the next thing you know, uh, your browser's freaking out. It's like, why is this not working? I don't understand. Like, that's potential time that you can lose. Um, and, you know, by, by creating consistency, we can centralize a lot of that manual processing that we're prone to errors by centralizing that into a script, just explicitly telling our, our computer, in essence, like what we want it to do for us so we don't have to worry about doing that. And it can do it so much faster than us. Um, so consistency is really important uh, as far as staying productive. Uh, and with something like Grunt, where you're writing all of these processes into a single script, it makes it that much easier to onboard somebody new. Like maybe, you know, okay, so maybe you don't work in a team. That's totally fine. Grunt is still very important in my eyes because who's to say that, you know, that project's going to forever be on your plate? What if you just decide, like, I cannot work on this client anymore? Like, I've moved on to bigger, better things because I'm amazing. Uh, and now I need to hand this client over to somebody that I, I you know, I respect and I want to give them, you know, more work to do. With having something like Grunt, they don't need to worry about what your workflow was or like what kind of certain weird gotchas kind of were. You can hand this off so easily to them. All they got to do is come in and type in that one command and it'll just do it for them. You don't have to worry about onboarding them. Uh, you know, on the flip side, if you're working in a team environment, like whether you work in an actual business, uh, like an agency where you're working with multiple people or you're just collaborating with somebody else, like you're just seeking out someone for that extra bit of help, they can jump in and easily get up to speed that much faster on your project because they know that they can come in, they can look at quickly how the grunt file was kind of written and know kind of what's happening and be like, okay, if I enter in this, this command, it'll just do what I need it to do and I can double check and yeah, my work's great, I'm done. So that's also less time that you have to worry about necessarily subcontracting or billing out to someone else because they could easily burn four hours because they didn't understand your workflow, right? Um, so that's another kind of thing that's really great about Grunt. Um, last time we kind of touched about this a little bit is the community behind it. It's been around for a long time, uh, very active community. I mean, every month the, the numbers that we saw earlier are um, increasing every single month, if not maybe doubling in some instances. If you look at the, the graph that they give you, you know, you'll see it like it's progressively going, they'll just jump all of a sudden, and they'll just kind of progressively go and then jump all of a sudden. So there's a lot always going on in this, in this, um, in this whole kind of, I don't want to say framework, but uh, this, uh, this piece of software, we'll go with that, we'll go with software. All right, uh, so what can you actually do with Grunt? We talked a little bit about what you can do. These are, this is more of a higher level idea of what you can do, the idea of, uh, you could do linting, which is what I mentioned before. We had JS hint, which is a JavaScript linter. Uh, basically, it's, it's a script, script, robots are our friends, people. Uh, it's a script that can look for common known occurrences that can create bugs. And the same goes with, with CSS, it can find common little things that it's like, well, hang on, you missed a semicolon here, that's gonna break everything. And you'll catch it before you even push it to your, uh, you know, take the time to FTP it over to your server and find out it's wrong. This will check that for you. Um, it can do a ton of different pre-processing. Uh, some of the most common pre-processing is um, the idea of converting one language into another. So that would be SAS or less, or uh, if you're more in the JavaScript space, you got something like CoffeeScript, which is just another different way of writing JavaScript. Same with, you know, SAS and less for CSS. Uh, and there's a bunch of other languages that you can use to do that same thing. So there's plugins available for all of those. If you decide you want to create your own preprocessor, you can go and create your own Grunt plugin if you want. Who cares? Um, minification, we talked about that, you know, minifying JavaScript CSS files. Uh, you can even minify your HTML files. Uh, WordPress, that gets a little tricky, or any other kind of CMS tool, but um, if you're working with raw files, you can also use Grunt to minify all of your HTML into the small, small file size, too. Uh, concatenation, merging multiple files into one. Uh, deployment. Who actually loves sitting there FTPing every single little change that they do? I certainly don't, and that's personally why I've kind of moved to Git as my main deployment tool. Uh, but if you are still um, heavily using FTP, SFTP, or uh, SSH, um, 
Grunt has plugins to do that for you. So you can make that as part of your, your build tool, right? When you've, te you've, you've compiled everything, you've tested it, it worked great, all right, do this one command and it'll just FTP, for, F FTP it for you. You don't have to worry about putting that all together if you need to. Um, image optimization. Uh, as much as we'd like to think that Photoshop, save for web, gives us the smallest file size, there's still a lot of metadata that gets written to those files. Um, there's a bunch of other image optimization tools that you can use that have also been bundled into grunt plugins to strip out as much data as possible until it's, it's down to that smallest file size that it can. Uh, so there's plugins available for that. Uh, and if you're into uh, doing application development stuff, unit tests is your best friend. Um, that's something that I don't run into too many people that, that do that of, but I highly encourage you to check it out because unit testing is awesome. If if development is your area. But we won't worry too much about that. There's a ton more options. Like I said, you know, there's 12,000 grunt plugins. These are just some of the more popular subjects that are really common in most projects. All right. So we've kind of filled your brain with all this stuff. You're all experts now. Awesome, great. Uh, so now we're gonna actually like do something a little bit fun. We're gonna kind of, I'm gonna, we're gonna get a high level view of how to actually install Grunt uh, and kind of get a, a real small, quick project set up. We'll just kind of quickly run through these slides and then we'll come back and we'll actually, I'll sit down and manually do it right here on my computer so you kind of get, so like we kind of take it home a little bit. Um, so first off, it is, Grunt is an extension of Node.js. So this is a, a requirement of the plugin or the, the module as you would say. Um, for it to actually run. So it, it heavily harnesses the Node.js architecture that lives on your computer. The idea of Grunt is that this isn't something that you necessarily put on your server. You can, but the ideal workflow is that this is something that you have on your local computer that you're processing yourself and then deploying out to wherever that code needs to actually publicly be accessible. Um, so the idea is that we'll install Node.js locally. Uh, that's pretty straightforward to do. All you gotta do is just nodejs.org. They got a nice little executable file that you can just download for your, your Mac or Windows machine. I wanna say it's supported on Linux. Uh, I don't know that 100%. Um, and it's got a fun little wizard that you can just install. Nothing too scary. Um, so once, once you've done that, you're ready to actually run a few commands to uh, install git or <laughs> install git. You'll install grunt uh, and then we'll start to actually put our project together and install a few plugins. So some of that looks like this. Um, it's a little scary at first, especially if you're not familiar with command line stuff. I did a really fun talk on that a while ago. Uh, so basically each of these different lines are different steps that we're doing. Um, and just a quick, quick revamp, if you're a uh, quick catch up if you're not too familiar with command line. Basically, this is where I am currently on my computer. So this little tilde is the home directory. That's the root of where my user account is on my computer. And I have a folder in there called project. From there, I'll type in this command, npm install dash, dash grunt dash cli. Basically what that does is uh, npm is, uh, is a package manager tool for node, npm, node package manager. Uh, and we're basically telling this piece of software inside of Node that we want to install the Grunt command line interface globally within my computer. So kind of break that down. We're gonna install Grunt CLI globally into my computer is what that's doing. Uh, and the first time that you're setting up Grunt, you only have to run that once. You don't have to do that every single time. Uh, from there, once you've done that, Node has recognized that, okay, yeah, this software is here. Like we're, we're ready to go. From there, you can start using um, the Node Package Manager to uh, initialize your, your project. Uh, so basically, the npm init command will generate what's known as a package.json JSON file. And this is like a, a special little file that contains meta information about your project for Node. Um, if you're actually building a project for Node, most of what's in there isn't too important but Grunt relies on this for it to know what plugins are required for your project. So we'll, we'll kind of dive into this a little bit more and like I said, you know, we're just gonna kind of quickly run through this 
and then we'll come back and actually see it in action, and you'll kind of start piecing this all kind of together. Yeah. Do you yeah. install Grunt in each separate project? You can install Grunt in a in a separate package, but no, in each separate project. So if you have right, right, uh, yes, yeah, in in each separate project, you can. Um, but really, like, you you want uh, the easiest thing is to say that you want Grunt to be available in any directory in your computer, wherever you want to set that up. There's a few extra, like, you know, this will give us access to to be able to use Grunt anywhere in the computer. But you know, from here, like we're actually able to centralize, you know, and say, like, you know, this specific project, you know, we want to be using Grunt in there. We'll kind of, we'll kind of, you'll you'll see how it kind of connects up here in a minute. Um, so npm init will create uh, our package.json file, uh, and then from there we actually install some of the, the core components of Grunt into your specific package. So that's what this line will do. We're, again, telling the Node package manager that we want to install Grunt. And this last little thing here is a, is a flag that tells um, Node that this is a development de dependency of this project, as opposed to just like a normal dependency, which um, the project would require for it to function. So for example, um, Best example I have is is kind of coming from a, a node background where you would use a special piece of software for templating your 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 applications. Um, you would mark that as a dependency. Grunt is a develop. This is something that you depend on to develop your website. So that's kind of the idea behind that. Um, and then the last item is uh, this is an actual Grunt plugin. Our uh, Grunt contrib uglify is the name of it. Um, Anytime you see Grunt Contrib, this is basically a, a plugin that's offered by the people behind Grunt. Uh, there's a lot of other public uh, plugins, which those will just come across as Grunt Dash, whatever the name of it is. If you see Contrib, that's more of an official plugin kind of thing. Uh, so basically, that's us installing the, the minification plugin. I know it's a lot to kind of take in. Um, that's why we're going to come back and see this all more in action. Um, <clears throat> so once we've done all that, we're going to create a, uh, a file called gruntfile.js. And like I said, it's all JavaScript based. So if you're familiar with JavaScript, this should be fairly familiar. Um, pretty much, we got this large chunk here. Uh, we got the grunt.init config. Basically, anything that's contained inside of there, we're configuring our plugins to say what we want it to do. Uh, in this simple example, we're just kind of, we're just minifying one file. Or, we're minifying, yeah, we're minifying one file, but we can come in and say as many as we want. Um, basically, we pass it in some extra options where we can tell it, you know, like how we want to minify this file, such as um, doing the mangle option, which will take variables. So, like, it could be something called um, homepage title, right? Like, that could be the name of the variable, and that will compress it into just one character. Um, you could set that to false if you don't want it to do that. Uh, you could set compression to, to false uh, if you want, where it's not minifying the file. I think that's kind of opposite of what you want to do. Uh, and then you can do some other fun things like doing a, a source map. Um, if you're not familiar with source map, that's the that's a file that browsers use. So you can actually view minified files on the web browser as opposed to being stuck with all this you know computer centric code that's like I don't know what anything is happening here. Uh, that's something that I don't see enough of, and I'd like to see more of it. Um, the last little chunk here is just us basically saying what files we want to target and what we want to rename them to when we minify it. So this is the original file that I had hand typed that I can actually personally read. And then Grunt will generate this file here, which is script.min.js. Basically, that's, that's the end result that we'll, that we'll see. Uh, before we move on to the next, just kind of flag these two. Uh, down here at the bottom, grunt.load npm tasks. That's us just loading in the different plugins that we can actually bring into grunt, and then we can create different tasks. Um, as you add more plugins, this becomes a bit more clear of like really what you can do. Here, it's just a simple example because we're running one thing. But if in most projects, uh, you know, you have six different tasks. Like some are CSS based, some are JavaScript based. If you only want to process your CSS, you can create a task centered around that instead of going in and doing your whole entire grunt task if you need to. 
once you've created that whole file, that's our actual script that we tell Grunt what it needs to do. Uh, once you've done that, you just go into your command line, and you run this little, little Grunt command, which is just the default. If you create custom tasks, it would be Grunt CSS, if you have another task called that. Um, and it will then go in and do that. Once you've set up all of that, you don't need to worry about it ever again. So if we kind of step back a little bit, back to uh, a few slides back where, you know, saying like, you know, if you spend this amount of time up front setting this up, which is all of that that we see there, once you've done all of that, you're done. And as you progress into your project, you never need to worry about autom like touching any of this code ever again, theoretically. And once you've done that, you've got code that you can recycle for the next project and streamline the process. As you do it, the more this, this kind of becomes simpler. It's a lot to digest, I know. Um, so, you're all good? Any questions? Has anyone's brain melted yet? A little bit, a little bit, okay. So, let's try and do this. Um, so I'm going to take a seat here, and let's actually run through this process a little bit. And hopefully this, this will kind of help get you guys more into the zone and not feel absolutely terrified of it and running for the hills. So, let's see here. Um, I need to, I need to do this. Um, Screen. All right, everyone can read that? Okay, uh, colors are a little, contrast isn't too great. All right, so uh, if we're looking at our list here, the first task that we need to do when we're first creating Grunt, what's that, Missy? What, can you read, you can't read that? Can you read, can you read this? Does that work? Is that, is that good English? <laughs> Pronounce that perfectly. Uh, okay, so the first command that we see here is we have npm install dash g grunt cli. So again, this is us actually installing the grunt command line tool in our computer. Um, so if we do npm install dash g, so we want to globally install this, and go ahead and do that. Uh, okay, <laughs> doing it live, always fun. Uh, one thing that you might run into, and documentation all the time that you know says like, oh, just do this, and then you see all these errors. You don't know what the heck is going on. Uh, the reason that this came back is because I don't currently have administrator access on my computer to say I need to make this adjustment to my system. So on a Mac, that would be something as simple as sudo. If exclamation you're out of, or you could do that too. Um, if you're on a Windows machine, uh, you just need to make sure that you open up your uh, your command line interface as an administrator. So you'll find the, uh, it's, uh, what's the word for it? It's uh, CWD is the name of it, I believe. Uh, and you just right click on that and you can say run as administrator. That will CMD. get, CMD, thank you. Um, thank you. <laughs> I always forget about that command. So pretty much, uh, so when I did that, you see a few little things. Don't worry too much about these warnings. I mean, they're just warnings. Who cares? Um, but if you really want to want to know, like, kind of what's going on, you know, like it kind of breaks it down. Like it's saying that you know we've taken these files and we've installed these on your computer. So if I were to follow this file path, I'll find these exact files where Grunt has been installed globally on my computer. So once this has happened, I can access um, the the, the core command line interactions of Grunt anywhere within my computer. Um, so that's the process of that. And you only have to run that once. The first time you're first setting it up, you just got to do that once. And then you're good to go. I mean, you can come back and redo it if you want, but there's no harm in it. If anything, it will just update it for you. Um, so from there, we're actually ready to start putting our project together. Um, and I like to use the built-in tools to, to generate some things for me. So that's where this npm init comes in. You don't necessarily have to run this, but it's, it's a nice little step through to help you generate some required files that you need. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change my directory to 
Uh, I have a, a folder in my home directory called project. And if you're still kind of confused on where I'm at, um, if I run this little command, it will open up my, um, my finder window in my Mac. And basically, if I were to scroll down here, this is, this is what the tilde relates to is my home directory. It's basically my user account. It's not like the root of the computer, but it's, it's in a little bit to where anything that, I, that my current user on this computer that I'm logged in as, where things get stored. Um, and then within that, I have a, a folder in here called project. Um, let me pull this over here. I'm getting all window crazy now. Um, what was the command to increase the font size in this? Command plus. Nope, not on this one. I forgot what the command was. That's um, PHP Storm. I knew I figured it out at one time. OK, well, right now that's not too important. Uh, basically, I have a very bare bones project in here. Uh, it's an empty piece of HTML. Uh, I'm loading in jQuery. I have a JavaScript file that I'm loading in, uh, and here's that JavaScript file. And basically, it's just some basic JavaScript that essentially puts an H1 tag into the body that says howdy. Nothing too special. This is just a demo, so it doesn't really matter really what's happening here. That's not important. It's the fact of this code is what we want to work with within Grunt. So let's come back here. Um, OK. so. In my command line, I'm currently in that project. And I can re-verify that if I type in ls. I can see the exact, I can see the, uh, the index.html and the, the JavaScript folder. Uh, so now I can do npm init inside of here. And this will take us through uh, a special utility that will generate that package.json file that we mentioned. Uh, again, this is a file that contains metadata about your project that Node uses uh, specifically. But Grunt also, since it's a Node plugin, it utilizes this to record what plugins you have installed for Grunt to run and things like that. So we'll kind of see this um, kind of come together as we go. Um, so when you type in npm, npm init, bunch of text at the top. We're not too worried about that right now. Uh, and at the bottom, it starts asking me a bunch of questions. It wants to know the name of my project. OK, well, I'll call this test. Um, this area cannot take spaces, so I can't say test project. That will error out. You've got to do dashes or underscores or you know, mash them all together, however you want to call that. Um, so I'll call that test. I can say what this version is. I think, that's, I think the default's fine. I can, uh, um, I can give an exam or a description to that. Um, wimp, grunt. Example, Ooh. Uh, entry point, we won't worry about that. That's something uh, Node.js specific test command. We'll get past that. Uh, if your project is up available on a Git repository, you can record that here so other people can find it easily. Um, you can put in keywords, because again, you can create plugins that are publicly available on Node. So it's, it's just asking a bunch of things that really to us right now is just not important. This isn't really specific to Grunt. Um, and everything that I like to do is GPL, so I'm going to mark the license as GPL. Uh, and when we get to the end of this, it gives us a, a quick check of what it's going to be creating. So we can see here in my, in my home directory, that's, this is basically what the tilde looks like. We got the project folder, and it's going to create a file called package.json. And this is essentially what that data looks like, of what it's going to look like when it actually creates that for us. The thing that I like about so much about npm init is that it does this for us. You don't have to worry about like, oh, what was that thing called again? I don't remember. Now you're you know, burning all this time trying to write this. So we'll just do it for you. Remember, automation. That's what we're here for. Uh, so I will just say yet. No, that's not what I want. Yes. Doesn't look like much has changed. Uh, if I come back to PHP Storm, you can now see that file is in here. We have the data in there. Um, I'm actually just going to drop these out because these are just not needed at all. But um, OK, so we have a basic package.json. Any, any questions around this before we move forward? This is making a little bit more sense? Yeah? OK. All right. So next on our list, if we come back here, we have, uh, so OK, so 
We've initialized our project. It's what npm init allows us to do. We've initialized the project. From there, we're now ready to start adding our development dependencies to our package.json. So um, when we hand off this project to someone else, they can run one single command, and it will go and install all this stuff for them. Uh, this is basically what this process is doing. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to actually register with uh, within this package.json that grunt is a requirement for this project. So this is what this second line of code does. Um, I'm just going to clear this. And from here, we just type in npm install grunt. And we'll do dash dash save dev. So again, the dash dash save dev will record grunt as a development dependency in the package.json. We'll see what that kind of looks like in a second. So you just hit enter, that sudo command. Let's do that one more time. And the two surprises mean execute the previous um, command just using sudo? Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, and that's a, that's a Mac specific thing to my knowledge. No, that's Linux. Is, well, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, Linux, basically. Uh, so what I was getting at is Windows, if you're on Windows, that might not be the command. Um, so, so if we come back and look at this, we ran this command, which then in turn generated all of this craziness. A little weird looking. Uh, but if we look at the very top, we can see that we've installed Grunt with this specific version. And inside of our project, it created this file path. So anytime you're creating something within Node.js, it creates a folder called node underscore modules. And inside of there, every module that you install, it is installed as a, um, as a folder inside of there. So if I come back to PHP Storm now, um, Finder. you can now, yeah, actually, let's, let's go to Finder. So it might be a little bit easier to read, because I think I can bump that font size up. Apparently not. OK. Um, so we can actually see that there's a new folder inside of our project called node modules. Uh, inside of that is this folder called grunt. It contains some files that communicates with the grunt CLI tool that we globally installed. And it, it also uh, uh, will create the connection between some of the, the innards of, of grunt, basically. OK. So, uh, we, so we have grunt now kind of synchronized and set up as a um, Oh, wait, actually, the last thing, we need to see what that actually did to our package.json, huh? Um, where's my mouse? So after I ran that command and I did that flag at the end, the dash dash save dev, it actually generates this inside of our package.json for us. And the reason that this is important, uh, and we'll, we'll take a look at this at near the end, is when you hand off an existing grunt project to someone else, they would take all these files, put it onto their computer, um, they typically don't get the node or the yeah the node underscore modules folder because it's big, it's bulky, it's nasty. Um, the idea is that they'll come in and they'll say, okay, I want to install all dependencies that's a, that's set up for this project, and it will go in and it will look at uh, grunt or node. Sorry, node will look at this file and look at the list of uh, development dependencies or dependencies if that's listed, uh, and go in and install all the stuff for you. So. More automation stuff. That's what it's. That's what it's all kind of all about here is being able to use software to take care of these these pieces of um, these redundant processes for us. So that's what we did there. Where do we want to go? All right. So the last thing that we're going to do here in preparation of getting our project up and going is that we need to install the Uglify plugin. This is the actual plugin that will make us productive. There's a lot of setup. There, you know, there's a little bit of setup in the beginning, but again, you know, as you get through this, it becomes pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna now install the Uglify plugin, which will take our JavaScript, mash it into a, a small file for us. Uh, once again, I'm gonna clear this. This time, I'm gonna do sudo. Learning from my mistakes. Uh, grunt, contrib. Uglify save dash dev. Okay, so if I hit enter, we'll see a very similar output as what we saw when we did grunt. We got the name of the plugin, the version that was installed, and where that was installed inside of our plugin. And just to kind of reinforce it, we'll come back to PHP Storm. And now you can see that once again doing that dash dash save dev at the end, it'll put this in there for us. 
And then on the flip side of that, we can also see it installed in our project. All right, configuration is done. Victory, celebration, beers all around. All right, so now kind of comes the more kind of crazy part. What I'm going to do just to save time, no, I don't want that. That's the, uh, that's the grunt mascot, in case if you're curious. I'm actually just going to copy this. I'm going to come over into um, PHP Storm. Now, there is a, uh, a command that you can, or uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Uh, there's a template that you can install that will auto-generate your grunt file for you, which is you know all of this code that we see here. Or it will at least get you started. There's still some manual process that you'll need to do. But for this, we're just going to quickly just kind of create this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new JavaScript file in here, and that's called gruntfile.js. Uh, and that has to be a capital G, by the way. I'm just going to paste this into here. And let me just see if I can bump up this font size, because this is just not working for me. There it is. Aha. OK. So let's make this just a little bit more readable. Give a little bit of extra space in here. I wanted this all to be spaced out a little bit better in the presentation, but I only have so much real estate there. OK. Um, <clears throat> So, like we originally talked about, the most important areas when you're creating your grunt file, the actual configurations that will, that will make all of this stuff magic for you is, you know, really it's, it's everything that's in inside of the, the grunt.init config area. As, as the name kind of implies, it's the configuration area of, of grunt. Um, and inside of this, I'm actually going to decrease this just a little bit so we can see it a little bit more. And inside of this, this is just the one block of configurations that I am doing for Uglify, so I can minify my file. Um, just to kind of recap a little bit, um, basically, I have, uh, so we, we define the actual plugin that we're addressing, what we're going to be configuring for. That's usually the name of the plugin, so in this instance, it's Uglify. And you can create different processes that you can, that you can create inside of that. Um, so that would be this giant block of code, basically. Like this is, I can create as many of these inside of the Uglify plugin if I want to. So like I can create specific builds if I want, you know, that, you know, in this specific use case, it's like I'm going to grab all of my JavaScript. So I called it all. You can call this whatever you want. It could be donkey board if you want. I don't care. Um, uh, but in this instance, I, I'm, I'm going to call it as it is. You know, it's, I'm going to take all of my JavaScript and I'm going to minify it. That's, that's the idea of what this code is doing here. But it, like I said, you know, you can come in and create some other specific ones. Like maybe you just want to you want to minify a specific section of JavaScript or or you know other code that you need to. You can create other other um, specifications for that. Um, and for each of those, you have the option, uh, or you have uh, options. Um, or actually, let's. Oh, I'll show you in a second. Um, you can set a bunch of different options, such as you know, mangling your variables into the smallest amount of characters that you can. You can remove all white space. You can create source maps. Um, this is another thing that a lot of people like to do for minified files: is putting in like you know, who's the owner of this file? You know, uh, this is kind of known as like a banner. Um, you can get really complex with that if you want. Like you can have that like totally auto-generate based off of information that's in your package.json if you want. In this example, I'm just kind of hard coding it where I got my name and the year. There probably should be a copyright symbol in there, but eh. copyright. It's GPL. Who cares? Um, so all of those options define within the Uglify pl plugin what I want it to do. Um, and then the last chunk is just me selecting what scripts I want to grab and where I want to minify them to. If I want to do multiple files, I can, like, basically this is just a JavaScript array. And, you know, basically I can just come in and put on some more things. Just point to where that is from my, my project. 
Um, so basically, this process here alone will actually take two files, mash them together into one minified file. You can do that if you want. Um, but for this project, this example, I only have one file. So we'll, we'll bring that back. Um, so that's, that's what a basic configuration looks like for one single plugin. Um, a lot of them are structured the same, but you know, each plugin kind of has their own different options. You can go to their, um, what you can do if, you're, if you need to find out more, you can always go to gruntjs.org. And we're in a completely different language. Thank you, CD or VPN. I'm just going to disconnect off of that. Sometimes my VPN routes me to really strange places. <laughs> OK. Anyways, that says plugins. I'm not going to fiddle with that too much longer. Uh, basically, you can click on plugins. I don't know what's going on there. It's a little, oh wait, here we go, translate, please. Anyways, you can click on plugins and you'll see a long list and you can click on those plugins and they give you a whole bunch of directions. Uh, one instance where VPN is not your best friend. So we'll come back to this. <laughs> Silly VPNs. All right. Um, and then last but not least, you need to make sure that you actually initialize the plugins that you've installed. So you just basically do grunt.load npm tasks, and then you point to whatever the name of that, that, um, that plugin is called. So that kind of connects up with our folder name here. Uh, and one thing that you'll notice is that I'm not specifying grunt. Well, that's because it doesn't make sense to load grunt inside of grunt. Uh, nat like, Naturally, uh, when you've installed uh, the, the grunt components to communicate with the CLI tool that you've installed, it will just auto run that automatically anyways. So no need to worry about that. Um, and then lastly is you can register tasks. Like this is just a default. All I got to do with this is just type in grunt and it will run it. But again, you know, I can come in and create whole entire new ones so I can optimize my workflow. Like, Maybe I got a ton of CSS and I don't want to go in and do the whole entire build process. I can, you know, point that to wherever my my CSS is, and that will. Or sorry, I don't put it in the file path there. I would link that to another plugin that I needed to run within that task. Um, again, we'll kind of look at doing something a little bit more in depth in like an actual workshop if you're interested. Um, so this is what a real bare bones grunt file.js. This is the actual configurations. This is the script that you write that will eliminate those redundancies that you have to manually do every single time. This is where that, that all those little money symbols that we saw on the one week thing comes in. Yeah, that's, that's, this is where your money starts coming back after you've done this. Unless you're paid by the hour. Um, well, <laughs> yes, that is true. But yeah, all right. So again, as we kind of come back to this, once we've created our grunt file.js, we can actually come back into, like from there we're ready to actually start working on our project. You've spent hours on it. You've wrote all of this awesome, crazy JavaScript. Um, before I get ahead of myself, I do actually need to update this a little bit. Um, one thing that I like to do when I'm minifying files, for example, I'll stick the actual raw file that I'm writing, which you know looks like this, and I'll actually, tuck that away somewhere else because you do typically run into weird things where you're copy like you're essentially duplicating a file and minifying it back into the same directory. It's a little crazy sometimes. Uh, so general good practice is to tuck that away somewhere else. So I'm going to put that into a folder that I'll call source. Let me just make sure I fix this. Yep, that is. Okay. So, great point. I'm going to have it generate and link to that. You could also use Grunt to auto update this. So, like, you know, if you, you know, if you're working, um, you can create a build task that it's like, okay, I'm ready to deploy this to my actual live server, and you know that the file paths are different. Or you don't want it to, you don't want to view the, the minified file locally, you want to view the other one. You can have Grunt come back in, find those things, and replace all that for you as you're sending it over to your server. It's 
really cool. I like that. Um, that's another fun thing that you can do with it. Uh, so our project is ready to go. I've spent hours on it. I'm ready to actually run Grunt. So I'll just run Grunt. Uh, all of that time did that one little thing. Um, basically, if there were any issues, you know, it would come back like, you know, we got it done without errors. Yay, one file was created. Let's come back into PHP Storm. Oh, what's that? There's our, there's our script.min.js. It's really quick. Oh, wait, no, it isn't in source. No, I have it dumped just straight into the, yeah, the root of the JavaScript file. It in HTML. No, the HTML was, was fine. No. Oh. <laughs> You're good. Okay. This is what the original JavaScript looked like. And after I put all that stuff together, this is what my JavaScript now looks like. And you'll notice some things like A and B. That's our mangle coming in when that used to be, um, used to be window in the JavaScript, or JavaScript, uh, the jQuery um, key and things like that, you know, and uh, let's see here, some other things. We've got B, yeah, like that's the mangle kind of coming in. Um, so all of that will generate that for us. Like at first glance, like looking at this, like, that wasn't that cool. Sorry, I couldn't really do a cool enough uh, demo without like just bombarding you with even more code. Um, probably could show you a quick sample of what maybe a um, an actual working project kind of looks like. I can pull open. Um, a WordPress plugin that I built for WIMP, our member directory. Oh, come on, what am I looking for here? Give me a second. So here's an example. So uh, here's uh, a plugin that is right now in closed beta. Um, it will be open soon where you know, we have our membership directory stuff. Um, all of that's using Grunt. Here's an example of what my Grunt file looks like. You know, there's a bit more craziness. Like we got our, our concatenation where I'm mashing all of our files into one and then I'm checking to make sure that there's no errors in my JavaScript. I'm minifying that stuff. Uh, I have uh, some unit testing things for JavaScript. I'm processing SAS and minifying CSS. Page optimization. Watch is kind of a cool, fun thing to use. Um, all kinds of craziness. Like this is what a general project kind of looks like. But all of this stuff keeps me crazy productive. Like I can go in and just say, you know, do all of that stuff for me. It'll process all that stuff. Or I can just say, like, you know, I can just say grunt JS and it will do my JavaScript task for me. Uh, and then build creates an actual production ready piece of code because I have like, you know, unit tests and all this other stuff that I don't want in the finalized product. You know, that would, cre uh, like this, this final one basically creates this. It's an incredibly clean version of all of this craziness that's happening. Um, this is kind of what, you know, s modern day software development kind of looks like. You know, it's kind of bleeding over into the web space. It's the same kind of idea. So, um, so there's kind of a, a mouthful of, or dumping you guys kind of in, in a way. Um, so to kind of wrap up a little bit, you know, uh, there's so much that you can really do with Grunt. Uh, from a web project standpoint, uh, most of what I kind of ran through is pretty common grounds in most of the projects that I, that I work on. Um, Every single project that I work on, we're all, all my team members are using Grunt. That's becoming more and more of a requirement, uh, really, as far as a skill set goes in today's um, web industry kind of going forward. So, uh, you know, with that, you know, there's so much more that we can do here. And I, I'd like to be able to have a more hands-on kind of moment that, we, you know, if you're interested, you know, we can sit down and actually create some projects using Grunt because I could talk your ear off about this, but you know, it's one ear out the other, right? It's, it's so much to take in and really kind of getting with it is gonna kind of help set it in, I think, a little bit more. Um, 
some of those things that I think would be fun to kind of talk about. I don't really have a solid outline, but you know, creating more of a real world project, uh, doing some project scaffolding kind of things. So like we're not having to manually do all this stuff. We did a little bit of that with the npm init command. Um, we can create our own tasks. Uh, probably won't do unit testing because that's a whole entire another subject. Um, you could also do some other fun things like continuous integration stuff or um, running external tasks. And that's, that's kind of more in the um, expert realm of Grunt that even I don't really have a whole lot of experience in, but I've done it before. It's there. So that is my talk on Grunt. Hopefully you all uh, got something out of it and piqued some interest there in, in possibly optimizing your, your workflows a little bit more. Cool. Uh, 